Win and Ugly by Brad Gilbert, chapter number seven, The Key to Victory. The New York Times says, I'm great at making my opponents play badly. Arthur Ashe agreed. Brad doesn't have any strokes you'd want to write home about. And they're right. I don't overpower people. I don't have any flashy shots. I win because I have the ability to implement my basic game strategies successfully, maximize my strengths and minimize my weaknesses. That means I consistently get in a position where I am hitting a shot I like rather than one I don't. At the same time, I want to maximize my opponent's weaknesses and minimize their strengths. I want them to be hitting shots they don't like from positions they don't want. I'll lose if I go strength to strength. I'm good, however, at working my strengths against my opponent's weaknesses. The goal of my game plan is to turn the other people's own game against him. I did it to McEnroe that night at the 86 Masters in New York, and I've done it to many others elsewhere. Ahead are my keys for taking a player out of their A game and making them try to beat me with their B game. For picking apart a player's strokes and game plan and turning their advantage into your advantage. Who's doing what to whom? In order to follow the plan successfully, you need to understand what's going on in the match with your game, your opponent's game, and with the interaction of the two. My coach at Pepperline, Alan Fox, used to tell me, always be asking yourself during a match who's doing what to whom. That means knowing how and why points are being won and lost. It means knowing what's going on, what's going on out on the court. Are you losing points because your opponent is successfully attacking you at the net or eating up your second serve? Does the other player beat you from the baseline? Is your opponent crushing overheads? Are your forehands falling short? Are you getting passed when you come to the net? And on which side? Is the other player running around the backhand? Are, you, are they great with the groundies until you pressure them at the net? What is their style of play? Retriever, serve and volley, or something else? The correct tennis response to any situation during your match can only be determined by knowing who's doing what to whom. A successful player knows the answer. They may not know the exact numbers and percentages, but they have a sense of it. It's an ability, and you can develop it if you work at it. Most recreational tennis players don't know who's doing what to whom during their match. They don't pay attention. They don't observe and analyze what's going on. Believe it or not, I've even had a player at one of my camps tell me he didn't realize his opponent was a lefty until the middle of the first set. That happened to me also. This is me. I didn't know he was a lefty, and I didn't realize uh, that his backhand was his best shot, and I kept hitting there, and I got destroyed. Anyways, back to the book. The combination to the lock. Every player's game is like a combination lock. Without the combination, it's tough to open. But with the combination, it gets a lot easier. Knowing who's doing what to whom gives you the combination to the lock. For that came relatively easy once. For me, that came relatively easy once I really started applying it during matches when I turned pro. When I was a kid, growing up in Oakland, I was a major sports nut. I was fanatical about the Raiders, Warriors, and 49ers. I always tried to figure out what was going to happen next in the games I saw. Who was going to do what? One of my idols was Kenny Stabler of the Raiders, the snake. I'd watch him at quarterback and try to guess what play was going to get called. Would he throw to Casper or Baltinikov? And in what pattern? Or with the A's, could Catfish Hunter throw a knockdown pitch right after somebody hit a home run off of him? Or how would the infield and outfield position itself for various hitters in different situations? How would the Warriors get the ball to Rick Barry with 10 seconds left in the game? It was just automatic for me. I loved to analyze what was going on out there. Later, when I was starting out on the tour, it was the same. I studied a lot, not books, but other players. Anytime I saw someone new, I'd go watch them play and check out their games. Another player would say to me, hey, Boris Becker from Germany is on court five, and I'd go over to see him hit. The Fat Fritz and my little black book. Initially, I was watching more out of curiosity than uh, with any great purpose. 
I didn't work hard on using that information in my matches. This changed one day during my third month on tour. I played a match against Fritz Buchny. He was a big guy with a powerful serve. In fact, he was too big to get around the court well, but when his serve was working, he didn't need to get around the court very well. Fritz was built like a lineman for the UCLA, his alma mater. In fact, his nickname was Fratz, short for Fat Fritz. I figured he'd be a, he'd be a pushover. Typical of my matches in, the, in those days, I just showed up and expected that if I played well, I'd win. I hadn't given any thought to Fratz, his game, or how to exploit it. I lost in quick straight sets, 6-2, 6-2. What burned me up more than anything, or losing, was knowing that if I'd given it some thought before and during the match to what I should be trying to do, I'd have beaten him. A big guy like that who isn't quick and doesn't, uh, uh, and doesn't bend his knees, piece of cake. Just start moving him around with ground strokes, and when he comes to the net, give him some, some dippers to drop low and throw him up on occasional lob. I didn't get any of that though. After that, I got serious about collecting and using information about my opponents against my opponents. After that, I started wanting writing things down. It's when I started my little black book. Now a lot of players have a little black book with names and numbers in it. Yannick Noah had so many in it, he needed help carrying it. But my little black book was different. It had names in it. There were the names of tennis players. It had numbers in it, but there were the numbers of unforced errors, winners and forcing shots on, a partic on particular strokes. I counted, I counted mistakes and backhand volleys, overheads, forehand and backhand ground strokes. I kept track of winners on those shots and watched what they liked to do in specific situations. <laughs> 